Hey everybody, welcome back to another Cheapo Meter Review. Today we're looking at the, and you know it's my favorite, the Kingsdon Digital Multimeter, the KSD830 series. Uh, this is a uh, no holes barred, really basic, um, non-auto ranging multimeter. It's, uh, in terms of the cheapness, well it's cheap, I paid this, uh, paid approximately $10 Canadian for this. And I attained it not online, but at a local uh, electronics store. So for $10 Canadian, um, it's quite surprised to even see this. Now I did say it's based on the 830 series, so you kind of know what you're getting. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, the 830 is a proven platform, it's been around forever. And uh, they're built like tanks, and pretty well, doesn't take matter what you throw at it, um, they're fairly reliable. One thing uh, right off the get-go that I liked about this unit is the fact that it just feels good in the hand. Uh, very solid. For a cheap multimeter, um, you know what? It doesn't feel cheap. So that I like. And if you turn it around, you've got a nice standing bail that doesn't flop around. And the two um, probe slots where you can pretty well fit any kind of probe you want. Uh, even the probe masters, believe it or not, fit on this uh, guy. Um, I've just got some generic probes now. The probes that this unit actually ships with are here. Your typical uh, probe. Now let's just do the pole test. Okay, and it's a fail. Oh, damn. See? Yeah, it's all coming apart. So what I would recommend for these probes, if you really want to use them, um, put some glue in there and just don't go voltage crazy I would keep it for uh, low-level electronics uh, these probes if you want to start putting it on the mains what have you then invest in a slightly better probe um, the ones that I'm utilizing here picked up online and uh, you know they have a cat 3 1000 volt rating 10 amps and it's believable they're nice sharp tipped as well and I paid like I don't know three four dollars for these so um, and I, yeah, so any sort of higher voltage, uh, upgrade your probes. But other than that, um, you know, I like it. It has a really nice... Let's see if I can just back up a little here. The selector switch has a really nice feel, really nice sound, clickety-click. Uh, it doesn't stop in between the turns, so when you uh, change your dial setting, it changes with authority, which is nice. It's actually very well labeled as well. The color coding, unlike some of the uh, cheaper multimeters where the colors can be really hard to see, um, very, very well Im implemented here. Very nicely done and uh, very uh, clear. It does have a backlight, as you can see. Once again, for the price, that's a, a nice thing. Now, the backlight is on for perhaps five seconds before it turns off. So that's too bad has your typical hold feature, nothing fancy. You get a reading, you press hold, release it again, and the hold is gone. Does up to 10 amps DC unfused. And here on the right, we have our volts, our ohms, and our milliamps. Now, I really wish they would stick with the um, color coding, so the positive is red and negative is black, but they don't. In terms of functionality, this does uh, nothing special. It does have continuity, which some of the cheaper brands don't. And I'm really happy it has that continuity feature. Just take a closer look at the dial. So we've got our volts DC, volts AC, both of them up to 600. We've got our amps DC from 200 microamps up to 10 amps. Remember that's unfused. We have our HFE, also known as our transistor setting, and there's the transistor slot here. We've got our continuity dial down here, nicely labeled. And over here we have the ohms resistance, so we have all the way up to 2 mega ohm. So pretty basic, pretty concise, um, but that's what this is. It's a basic, no frills, cheap multimeter. And like I said, I like the way it feels. You know, it's not super heavy, but 
It's certainly not light. It's not going to go flopping around when you're moving it. Sometimes these multimeters have a tendency to um, kind of go all over the place. You're making a uh, measurement and next thing you know the meter's halfway across the table because the thing is so darn light. But with this meter it's not the case so that's nice. I'm not going to do a whole lot of testing because this is a real basic meter. We will take a look on the inside in a minute. Um, let's just test the voltage once again. It's not auto ranging. And there we are. So this 9 volt battery is underpowered. We're showing it's 8.6 volts. I've had this meter for about two months now. And believe it or not, I actually take this guy on site a couple of times. I usually bring my key sights with me. And um, for whatever reason, this guy just being so handy dandy, uh, I just throw it in my uh, pack. And, you know, it's, so far it's sufficed. So uh, I like it. It also comes with a very sublime screen protector. You don't even know it's on there. So you might want to take that off at some point. Or not. I'm in the process of refurbishing an old 8022A Fluke multimeter, as you can see. Lots of wires. I'm replacing the display um, with a completely new unit. It's uh, totally compatible and uh, it's a lot of work but it's also a lot of fun and with all these wires there's always lots of continuity testing that has to be done so yeah I've been using this little Kingston 830L to uh, do a lot of the uh, troubleshooting as well and I've been taking this uh, 830L with me on site usually have my key sites handy but um, I've been bringing this with me as well just because it's uh, very uh, super duper. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail here with the Fluke. There will be a separate video on this eventually. But uh, I am replacing the default screen with a brand new uh, Veritronics model, VI302DPRC. And it has basically the same dimensions and it's 3.5 digit. So you're pretty well good to go. Now, yeah, there's lots of uh, wires. So it is a work in progress, but let's just try it for continuity. So we'll take our probes and we will see if I can. So there we go. Just moving along the path. So it, it's very, um, I'm not going to say it's very loud, but it's, it's loud enough. And if it's on the bench, what have you, you're not going to have any issues uh, hearing. It's, it's quite audible and um, it's fairly fast too. And I'll just take these probes and... Okay, so I said fairly fast. You can tell there's some lag. Um, But once it does latch, it's nice and loud, and it's pretty solid. There's no, uh... so if you need that instant bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, you won't be happy. But for all intents and purposes, um, for what I'm doing here and on site, it's been, uh, it's been just fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Mastic. I'm calling it a Mastic. I'm sorry, this Kingston. KS830L. I, I said Maztec because there's a big similarity. Uh, there's a lot of clones out there, and these are all based on clones. Um, you'll see uh, Maztec vary into this model. Pretty well the, identical. Um, the only difference is the price, probably about $15, $20 more. But it's basically the same meter. And uh, yeah, they all look the same. Different maybe is the boot itself. Some are yellow. Um, this one is green, which once again for me is very Maztec-ish. But, um, yeah, I like it. So I'm going to take this apart and we'll take a quick look inside. Okay, so now when it's 
unveiled glory. Here is the 830L. To open the back, you've got a couple of Phillips screws, two to be exact. They are just regular metal screws going into plastic inserts right here. Nothing fancy, no brass inserts, inserts, what have you, but that's okay. Um, no shielding on the back. That's not okay. It's too bad. Um, I won't go into that rant. But it is not shielded on the back. Take a closer look inside. There's our current shunt. Pretty small. Um, once again, it's unfused. So you're not going to want to be um, measuring the, uh, the current for any length of time. Moving up alongside, we have one of these classic... 200, let me see, 200 milliamp, 250 volt fuses. Now, fortunately, it's one of those interesting soldering deals. I don't know why they just can't put in a regular fuse, but they've soldered it, as you can see, directly on. So if you do blow the fuse, I mean, you would could technically replace it, but you would have to desolder it, and uh, yeah. A little more time consuming than really is necessary. In terms of input protection, that's pretty well it. Um, we see some resistor clamps here and a diode over here. We see one PTC, a small one, right up here. This is the uh, voltage connector for the 9 volt battery, which is down here. Take a closer look at the metal inserts for the probes. They are individually soldered on. These two soldering joints seem fine. This one is a little iffy. They are the split type. So over time, I'm assuming this one would probably wear out fairly quickly by the looks of it. So what I'll probably do is I'll get back in here with my uh, soldering gun and I will just uh, clean that up a bit, make it a little more solid going down actually here we are as you can see MAS 830L-2 so once again it is based on the Maztec as I said they're all clones um, everybody clones these days car manufacturers multimeter manufacturers so it's nothing new the PCB is dated as dis sorry uh, 2015 1209 so December 9th 2015 so in terms of multimeters, that's not so bad. We're in 2018 now, but um, this model has been around for a long time, so not that many changes are gonna happen. I don't see a revision per se on the PCB, although the Dash 2 just might be a second revision. This is the connector for the uh, little LED that's illuminating the backlight here. It's your typical zebra strip back there underneath. Here we've got our one piezo, and that is soldered one piece onto the main board, and the other is connected with a wire onto the PCB over here. So, yeah, not the greatest. I have seen this on a lot, though. It seems to be a standard uh, way of doing business in terms of putting on a piezo, but yeah, it is what it is, right? A uh, big capacitor over here. There's our glob over the IC, but it's just a generic IC. Um, looks like this would have been for the VR for the actual um, adjustment calibration. But that's pretty well it, as you can see. It looks to me here like they actually, or somebody, had initially put a fuse in, a proper fuse assembly, maybe on the original Maztec perhaps, but Kingston decided to remove that as a cost-saving feature and stick on one of these ultra-cheap fuses and just solder it in like so. Definitely would have preferred to see a fuse there. Um, anyway, another transistor over here, a couple more transistors up there, pretty basic, 9 volts, battery um, should last at least a couple of years. There you have it. So I'll put it back together and I'll come back with my final thought.
One thing I wanted to mention quickly is the boot itself. Um, considering it's such a cheap multimeter, it's actually a really nice boot. You have your standing bail here, which is really good quality all around. So yeah, it just feels good. It's a nice rubbery um, feel. The mechanism, which is embedded, just works. I mean, for, yeah, for a cheap meter, um, I really like the, uh, the holster, the boot, the cover, whatever you want to call it. And it has that industrial green look. Uh, so it, uh, yeah, it's great. Now, we've all seen the um, typical 830 clones. They're everywhere. You know what? I like them. I have nothing against cheap multimeters. Um, they have their place. I do have something against cheap multimeters that are built like crap because there's just no excuse for it. But generally speaking, I'm not going to call down a meter because A, it doesn't cost much money, or B, it doesn't do much. It comes from overseas. No, I'm not one to throw labels, but these two meters, and they're both cheap meters, um, this one actually cost me more than this guy. So, yeah. Not really much comparison. I mean, no standing bail on this guy. So, probes that this one came with were really, really poorly made. And no continuity. It has diode checking, but no continuity on this. So, display for this um, 830B is, is actually quite good. Fairly crisp and contrasty. And heck, I like that fluke color, but if I'm going to compare apples to apples, I'll take this guy any day. Um, good standing bail, has a backlight when you need it. Nice rotary switch, feels good, unlike this interesting thing. Yeah, so for comparison, I mean, they're both 830 clones, I will definitely go for this one. It's a cut above. And if you're going to buy cheap, might as well get good cheap. So I'm going to give the KS830L from Kingston a solid 4.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned. I got some really, really cool multimeters. Um, and I think they're going to be like really interesting. So those are coming up soon i've got a really busy month electronics all over the place but stay tuned because these are going to be some very interesting multimeter reviews and of course i'm going to always have my el cheapo multimeter reviews and i really appreciate all you new subscribers i love the comments good or bad it's all good to me and as i like to say keep on testing <laughs>